there. Welcome to day 947 of What's Up To Now. Sharon Horn Nelson here, documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world over a quarter century in corporate America, 47 years in different businesses and industries, onto the online world. Been on online, geez, a couple of years now, probably three, at least 947 days plus, because I definitely didn't hop online and hop on video right off the bat. It took a lot of conjoling and convincing and harassing and saying, get your rear in gear and get out there and show up, show up. And so since then, I've showed up every day with the exception of a couple of days. And actually, I did a video every day. I was on a cruise last November, did a video every day. I don't think I ever posted all of them, but I did do them. The only day that I recall missing in the last 947 days, literally missing, was Christmas Day last year, 2019, because I was flat out on the couch, sicker than a little muppy dog, uh, really, really sick, really, really sick with some kind of a flu version. Don't know what it was, uh, don't know what I even suspect it was, but it's the worst flu type thing I've ever had in my life. It was terrible. It was the only day I, I actually did not do my videos. I was talking to some friends yesterday about that and I'm like, yep, that's the one day I just, I couldn't make myself do them. Uh, otherwise, you know, are there days I feel like doing them? Yes. Are there days I feel like not doing them? Absolutely. But for me, it is a way that I can show up. It's the way I can serve. It's the way I can share. And it's the way I keep myself going through all crazy times, especially like the COVID pandemic, right? The COVID pandemic has blown up almost everybody that I know's lives in one, at least one area or aspect of our lives. So speaking of areas and aspects of our life, I learned from Tony Robbins decades ago that there's really seven areas and aspects of our life that we better pay attention to, at least on some level, some require more attention than others, depending on what's going on in our life, depending on how old we are, depending on uh, what our priorities are. But if we don't pay any attention to an area or aspect of our life, like zero attention, events and things and circumstances will rise up to get our attention. And it isn't always in a positive, happy, fun way. Uh, I learned that in just 10 years ago now with uh, my physical well-being. I let well, I let a lot of areas of my life go, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, relationships, and probably contribution and, and financial, probably all those areas were like, ah, at the time that I had my sudden cardiac arrest. But that was like the massive wake-up call that reminded me that I am in control and I, I have the ability to change and choose and decide, and I have more personal power than I was absolutely exercising or giving myself to really create the life that I want, not just to respond and react to whatever's comes my way because responding and reacting to everything that came my way wasn't working out for me so today and as part of covid one of the things i decided to do was i'm going to do a challenge i'm going to challenge myself to show up and be the best version of myself and, and continually improve and grow throughout this challenge so that when it's over this the covid19 pandemic when it's over i am better off than when i entered it i thought if i'm going to go on that journey why would i not bring people with me so the get up and go challenge was born I did it for the first time in the month of April. April was the first full month that we knew, at least in Wisconsin where I'm from, that we were gonna be shut down, that most people were gonna be home and it was just gonna be dead stop for a lot of areas and aspects of our life. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do a, get, I'm gonna do a challenge to get up and go secretly because I wanna make sure I get my rear up and go and I have something to motivate me and I don't just end up sitting on the couch or reading some dumb books that aren't gonna help me or I can't read, right? So I'd have to put them up on the big screen TV. So I, I don't just squander this time because there was a lot of hidden opportunities and hidden benefits in the whole pandemic. And most of us have a hard time seeing those because we're seeing what's right in front of us and all the things that aren't working instead of looking for the things that are working, looking for the benefits. I guarantee that families and relationships are stronger. Yep, more are strained, but they were strained anyway. It's just speeded up the process of dealing with the issues and things that we needed to deal with. Uh, financially, of all areas of our life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships and contribution, they've all been affected and they always are, but the COVID pandemic has definitely brought to light for many of us where our priorities were in alignment with who we are and who we really want to be and where they're not in alignment. Uh, I know that in, you know, if this had happened uh, even a decade ago, I would have been really struggling in certain areas and aspects of my life. I, I suspect my business would have been shut down. Not 100% sure we were a food manufacturing business. We might not have been. 
And as far as sanitation, social distancing, and safety, we wouldn't have probably missed a beat. We probably would have added, well, we, we were already wearing helmets and things. We probably would have added face masks, but otherwise we wouldn't have had to miss a beat because we we're already doing way more than most people would do or have to do from a sanitation and cleanliness um, safety standpoint. So probably wouldn't have missed a beat for the business, but might have been suffering and, and not been able to keep up. Um, like a lot of, there, there are actually a lot of industries that are experiencing that, that side of the equation as well. So thinking about the pandemic and the get up and go challenge, because today for the get up and go challenge, which was really day 32 of 30, I did a summary of what we did each day. So if people want to go back and listen to a particular day and go more in depth in it, they can do that. Uh, chew your cud was supersize your business's uh, idiom for today. What does it mean? Where did it come from and how could you apply it to your business? I, don't know why. I started doing that, I guess today was day 548. So at more again, more than that, because I didn't start numbering them until I'd done it for a while and decided, okay, yeah, I guess that's what I'm gonna do for a while. And I started doing it when I was getting ready to move, when I was packing up and cleaning out and, and organizing, you know, like lots of my life, decades of my life to downsize and decide what I wanted to do, what I wanted to keep, what I wanted to go, where I wanted to go and how I wanted to be moving forward. I thought, okay, I have to have something, some way to communicate with my business customers. How am I going to keep in touch with them? And what would be a little thing every day that I could do that would, would add value to their life, but also add value to my life? Because guess what? I get as much out of picking an idiom and then quickly researching what does it mean, where did it come from, and how could I apply it to my business right now? How could I use it to grow my business? What does it have to do with my business? It's like when we have a word, we pick a word or a uh, uh, a thought or an idea for a month or a year or a week or a day and it's like having a daily word well here's the word what does it mean to me and you just go out your about your day and you're like how do I ever hear this word does anybody else use this word what what's my definition of, of this word what do other people assume that the definition of this word is because there's a whole lot of words that we have totally different definitions than other people do Think of the word success, think of the word money, think of the word love, think of the word hate, think of the word racist, think of the word prejudice, think of the word whatever word, politics, think of the word any word win, lose, think of any word and the power that that has and the impact and what it means to you and realize that like everybody else on the planet, they might have part common understanding of a term or a word. Think of beauty. Beauty is different to each and every one of us. We all know that. But so are all these other words, so are all these other terms. So I think it's really valuable to look at not only what words actually mean according to the dictionary, but what when you put certain words together that they can mean something entirely different than when they're taken individually. So for example, chew your cud means something different as a, an idiom, as a phrase, than the word chew, the word your, and the word cud taken individually. It means something totally different. So. I think it's valuable to look at and understand what things mean. I mean, there's been a lot of research done that people that read are leaders, that people that have a good vocabulary are, are tend to be more influential in society and the world. And that's because, I think it's 100% because, people that read and are exposed to more knowledge and more information have the ability to call upon and use different emotions, different reactions, and more they have a bigger spectrum of things to choose from in terms of how they grow, how they respond, how they show up, and what they do in the world. So that's my own personal opinion, and I, I've actually seen it play out in so many circumstances. And, and does it in all? No. You know, there's always the, the person that wins the lottery, and they might not have any of the qualities of a super rich person, but they're super rich, right? And it's not about money. It's about impact and influence and whatever's important to you. Again, one of those, how do I define success? How do I know if I'm winning or not? Guess what? It's different for you than it is for me. I might be winning because I'm a grandma and I love being a grandma, and there might not be any monetary value associated with that, but to me, being able to spend time with my amazing granddaughter and my granddaughter on the way is more important than any amount of money, right? So that's my definition, might not be yours. So we talked about uh, chewing your cud today. I am gonna run like crazy today to figure out what is next for the get up and go challenge because we're still in a pandemic people are starting to go back to school which is all new challenges my granddaughter starts school in a couple of days she's in kindergarten so they start a couple of days later the rest of the kids start today but uh, so there's a whole lot of new things and new aspects and new ways to consider 
How do we get up and go? How do we continue to show up every day and continue to move toward what it is that we really want and be the best version of ourselves, given that there's so much change and chaos and turmoil? Guess what? Before COVID, everybody was always going through their own set of circumstances, chaos and turmoil. And someone's life might have been more or less impacted. The thing about COVID is everybody on the planet basically is being impacted by the same root cause thing. This event happened, it's impacting everybody. A lot of times individually we're getting impacted, but it's by different things all the time. We're still getting all those things, plus we're all globally being impacted by COVID. And for me, that means I need to show up, I need to do something to, in my little way, make the world a better place. And right now that's get up and go challenge. Will it be something different in a couple of weeks? I don't know, probably not, because so far this has really helped me and it's helped a lot of people just to know that they can be better off no matter what happens if they just use a simple process to make sure that they are managing the situation that and, and creating results that are the best for them, not just doing it by default. That's it. That's all I've got today. Go out and have an absolutely amazing, wonderful day. If I can help you in any way, ask in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with an update on what I'm working on as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Take care.